Hey guys and gals, imagine this. A world with a wild blend of ordinary and absolutely bonkers. Tada! Meet Kobini Yanomori, a normal high school girl who discovers she's engaged to a dude with some seriously mysterious vibes. And oh boy, his little sister. Total enigma. Let's dive into this anon called Engaged to the Unidentified. The anon begins with our protagonist named Yanomori Kobini, who has a strange dream in which she meets a boy. However, none of this matters because today is her birthday and she is super happy about it. Her older sister, Benyo, even makes her a cake to celebrate, and upon seeing how grateful Kobini is, Benyo starts in her nose as she has a serious case of steritis. Their mother appears to congratulate Kobini and informs her that now that she is 16, she will begin the engagement that her grandfather arranged. This surprises Kobini as she had no idea about this, but her fiancé named Hakia has been at their house for a while, and they hadn't even noticed him. The mother understands that it must be difficult to accept, so she tells Kobini to think it over. However, Hakia doesn't seem to care, which frustrates Kobini because he accepted it too easily. Then, Hakia's older sister, Mashiro, arrives, and she is an overprotective loli who constantly points out all of Kobini's flaws to make her a worthy wife for her Oni-chan. Benyu asks Mashiro why she doesn't do the same with Hakia since he seems emo, but Mashiro has already accepted her brother's personality. Kobini, on the other hand, had stopped listening because she was more concerned about the food as she hadn't planned on cooking for two more people, so she rushes to the market. Hakuya accompanies her to look after her, which turns out to be a good decision because she nearly falls as soon as she leaves the house, although he isn't the most self-sufficient person either, which continues to surprise Kobini. Meanwhile, Mashiro tries to find imperfections in the cleanliness of the house, but Benio tells her to ease up since everything is cleaned properly by Kobini. Benio warns Mashiro not to be too hard on her sister, or she will have to do the same to her, and she loves Lolis. Mashiro then feels genuine terror. Later, Kobini starts cooking and wonders how she ended up in an arranged marriage. However, this is quite common in Mashiro and Hakuya's hometown, and Hakia has grown up believing he already has a wife. Mashiro is delighted to see that Kobini is cooking curry because it's her favorite dish, but in the end, she suffers because it's too spicy. It turns out that Mashiro not only looks like a lowly, but also has her own tastes, and being from a rural area, she's easily amazed by simple things like the television. Kobini can't let someone suffer from her cooking, so she asks for Mashiro's recommendations to make adjustments. The next day is Hakuya's first day at school, so Mashiro goes ahead to finish the paperwork, and Kobini is worried that everyone will find out about their engagement. However, her friend overhears them talking and Hakuya introduces himself as Kobini's future husband, so they don't start off well at keeping their engagement a secret. Kobini sets a rule not to mention anything about the engagement. As expected, Hakuya ends up in Kobini's class, but he is in for a surprise when he sees that Mashiro has also been transferred to their class. She tells him not to underestimate her family's influence. Despite her influence, Kobini is surprised that they let an adult, even if she looks like a lowly, attend school, but this pleases Benio immensely, as she has her favorite lowly close by. Everyone is shocked to see that the esteemed student council president, Benio, has taken an interest in someone newly transferred. Mashiro runs away and everyone asks who she is and if she's related to Kobini. It turns out that Benio is popular at school for being intelligent and athletic, so anyone associated with her gets extra attention from her fans. This becomes a burden for Kobini because she is constantly compared to her sister. Hakuya notices that something is bothering her, so he consoles her. Kobini is surprised to see Mashiro hanging on to Hakuya and takes the opportunity to tell her not to resist Benio's games so much because it makes it more fun for her speaking from experience as she went through the same thing. Upon returning home, Mashiro can't believe how popular Benio is at school. She tries to win her over with childish gestures, offering her tea and sweets if she visits her in the student council room. However, Mashiro realizes that Benio only wants to be alone with her, so she flees to her room in fear. During dinner, Mashiro begins to talk about the time when Kobani visited their hometown, but Kobani doesn't remember anything from those years. Mashiro tries to recount everything that happened, but Hakuya stops her, believing that it's best left in the past. Mashiro doesn't understand why he wants to keep his secret that she saved Kobini when they were children, because that way, she could win her over. Hakuya thinks that if Kobini forgot it, it's because she doesn't want to remember, so he decides to respect that decision. Meanwhile, Kobini can't stop thinking about what happened when they were children in an attempt to get a reaction from Hakuya. She goes to ask Mashiro, but Mashiro had just watched a program about extraterrestrials and was terrified because her hometown didn't know about the myths of UFOs abducting humans. She's too frightened to talk, so Kobini can't ask her anything. The next day, Mashiro is still very disturbed because she believes that an alien spaceship could abduct her at any moment. She falls while running in the snow, and Kobini takes care of her. When they arrive at school, Benio manages to find them after staying in one place for so long, and she's surprised to see that Mashiro is afraid of extraterrestrials. This only makes Benio like her even more because she's more childish than expected. 
Mishiro can't comprehend Binyo's popularity and now believes that Binyo might be some kind of space being controlling all her fans. Of course, Kabini and her friend Mayura laugh at this notion, because Binyo has achieved her fame through her academic and athletic achievements. This only increases Mashiro's suspicions because she thinks it's impossible for one person to accomplish so much in such a short time. Benio is pleased to hear that Mashiro is thinking so much about her and tells her not to worry about whether she's an extraterrestrial. She just wants to be a big sister for the rest of her life and offers to be Mashiro's big sister as well, so Mashiro can call her one-sama, just like Kobani does. Mashiro refuses, but Benio's desire to be alone with her favorite Loli remains strong, so the student council vice president named Kashima takes Benio away to stop bothering them. Now that they've moved past the topic of Benyo, Mayura is curious about where Mashiro and Hakia are living. Mashiro tells her they're living with Kobini, which she tries to keep quiet so no one else hears, but this offends Mashiro because it's not a secret. Everyone turns to them upon learning that Mashiro and Hak, Luya, are living with Kobini, which means they're also living with Benyo. Mashiro is surprised by how influential this news is in the town, and Kobini can only be grateful that no one has found out about their engagement yet. The next day, everyone gathers for breakfast and Benio sticks to Mashiro as usual. The protagonist's mother asks Hakia what he likes to eat, and Kobini already knows all of his favorite dishes, which disgusts her a bit because they seem like a lovey-dovey couple. They arrive at school and Kobini isn't very motivated because it's gym class and she currently isn't in great shape due to her large chest. Mashiro understands her struggle because the extra weight makes it difficult for Kobani to even jump comfortably. However, Mayura tells her that her ample bosom has earned her several fans despite Benio's attempts to deter them from having any illusions about Kobini. This makes Mashiro realize that the biggest threat to her marriage might be Benio if she ever becomes jealous of Kobini's engagement. After classes, Mashiro is convinced by Kashima to go and eat some sweets in the student council room. This leaves Kobini and Hakuya alone to head back home. Hakia doesn't plan to leave her alone because he thinks it could be dangerous for her to carry so many things for dinner. While they are out, Kobidi buys individual bowls for Mashiro and Hakia, considering them to be part of the family now. Mashiro is delighted by this gesture and practically forces Hakia to say thank you. He's so upset-minded that he thanks Kobini's mother instead. The weekend arrives and Binyo crawls into Kobini's bed, but she's so accustomed to it that she doesn't react as surprised as Binyo would like. Meanwhile, Hakia receives a letter from his hometown and Mashiro panics when she sees it. She decides to reply immediately, so Hakia goes to deliver the letter once they finish writing it. While Kobini and Binyo hang up the freshly washed laundry, Binyo is pleasantly surprised to see that Mashiro's is childish in style. She's so happy about it that even Mashiro realizes it from her room, and she regrets sharing such important information about her sizes. Hours later, Kobini goes to talk to Binyo, who initially thinks it's about what models they can buy for Mashiro. However, Kobini actually wants to know why Benio is not against her engagement when she was always against her having a boyfriend. Benio knew this moment would come, so she tells Kobini that Hakuya saved her life when they visited his hometown, and that's why she refrains from separating them because he has merits, and it was also their late grandfather's will. Now, Kobini feels like the worst person in the world for forgetting something so important. The next day, Kobini feels so guilty that she gets sick and has to stay in bed all day. Mashiro asks her why she did it and Benio confesses that she told her because she feels guilty about the accident. She was the one who was supposed to accompany their grandfather, but she went out with her friends as she sent Kobini in her place, and what happened, happened. Kobini tries to reassure her, but she can't stay on her feet for long and they lay her down again. However, the real nightmare for Mashiro is just beginning because now Benio is in charge of cooking, and she's the worst cook ever. The next day, Kobini is still unwell, so she decides to skip school for a day. Hakia offers to stay and take care of her, but Benio refuses to leave two teenagers alone at home, so she decides to stay instead. However, no one ends up staying home because Kobini gets angry with Benio for trying to sacrifice herself for her. Still, all day, Hakuya seems even more depressed than usual due to worry. Therefore, they return home early to take care of Kobini. While cleaning her up, Kobini remembers the scars she has from the accident, but Hakuya doesn't have a matching one. She's relieved but still feels guilty because he was also injured while saving her. She doesn't know how to face him the next day. Hakuya notices that she's avoiding eye contact so he thinks she hates him and runs away. He runs so fast that Kobini and Binyo are surprised and Mashira becomes nervous because she doesn't know how to explain why Hakuya runs so fast. She simply says that they do a lot of exercise in the mountains. Anyway, Kobini is more concerned with clearing up the misunderstanding, so she chases after Hakuya and tells him that he's not to blame because all he did was save her, and thanks to him, she's alive. With everything clarified, they both go to school and Mashiro informs them that she influenced the school to have the first period as self-study, so they don't miss anything. 
However, Binio senses from a distance that Kobini and Hakia have grown closer and she feels terribly disgusted because her cute sister is one step further from her. Upon arriving at school, Kobini confides in Mayura, who thinks it's a great opportunity for them to get closer. However, Kobini doesn't know how to talk to Hakia, so Mayura decides to gather information for her by directly asking Hakia what he likes. He says he likes Kobini, leaving everyone speechless, especially Kobini, who is dying of embarrassment. However, seeing her reaction, Hakita feels a bit embarrassed too, and Kobini notices this. Mashiro is surprised by how close they've become as even she has difficulty distinguishing Hakuya's almost non-existent expressions. Unfortunately, not everything can be good news that day because in the evening, they receive a letter from their family saying that they will send a clan member to monitor their progress in the city. This alarms Mashiro. Other day, Benio buys some pajamas for Mashiro. Even though Mashiro pretends not to like them, she ends up wearing them. However, she almost forgets to tell the protagonist that a family member will come to check on things. Mashiro will also be evaluated because they want to see if she can eat natto again after such a long time in the city. Moreover, the protagonist is perfect as a wife, so she can't go unnoticed. Hakuya interrupts their dramatic moment to inform them that they have exams starting the next day. The protagonist gets worried and Hakuya comforts her by caressing her. After finishing the exams, Mashiro is exhausted because she is a middle school student. So the protagonist takes her to a cafeteria to cheer her up. Mashiro is delighted to see such delicious food, but Hakia doesn't share the same opinion because the protagonist's cooking is better. This exchange of compliments disgusts Benio as she can't stand seeing them grow closer in her presence. The person responsible for monitoring Hakuya and Mashiro's progress gets lost along the way and gets distracted by so many different shops. After buying a kilo of things, she bumps into the protagonist, who is coming from the market. The protagonist helps her without knowing who she is, but she realizes that she must be someone important because she is wearing a beautiful kimono. The protagonist is surprised when they arrive, and the woman introduces herself as Hakuya's mother, Shirayuki. She looks too young and Benio restrains herself because she's a lady. She wonders how such a petted person could have two children. To revive the protagonist from her shocked state, Benio starts preparing snacks for Shirayuki, because she can't treat a guest poorly. Nevertheless, Shirayuki is happy to see that someone as healthy as the protagonist will be her future sister-in-law. They have been having problems maintaining their lineage lately, so she is glad that the girl Hakia cares about enough to use his powers on as the one who will marry him. Mashiro is alarmed to hear her mother reveal what she had been keeping a secret, but now that it's out, they tell them that they are not actually humans. They belong to a species with many names and have the ability to transform into dogs, in other words, they're furries. The protagonist starts having memories of when she had the accident because she felt something very soft at that moment. But remembering so much causes her to fall ill again, so they lay her down and Shiryuki confirms what she suspected. It turns out that Hakuya shared half of his powers with her to save her. She is relieved that these symptoms can be resolved with rest. Nonetheless, now everything is clear, and she has to return home. She asked Binyo to keep everything she heard a secret, although she doesn't think many people would believe her if she spread the story exactly as she heard it. The protagonist doesn't fully believe the story either, so Shiryuki demonstrates her powers to her before returning to the mountains. The next day, Benio prepares breakfast to save the protagonist some work. The protagonist takes the opportunity to ask Mashiro if she can transform into a furry voluntarily. Mashiro replies that adult furries can do it without any problem, but they don't get fluffy ears and paws as Benio believes. However, the disappointment is also pleasing to her. The protagonist would also like to see Hakuya's transformation, but he refuses because they are in public. So they just go to school and receive their exam grades. To everyone's surprise, Hakia is very intelligent and gets the highest score in the class. Mashiro, on the other hand, is the complete opposite, and she confesses that she has never been to school. They only go to blend in with society which amazes the protagonist because despite her short time in school, she managed to pass by a narrow margin. The protagonist takes the opportunity of being alone with Hakia to see if he will show her his transformation, but he refuses once again, which depresses her quite a bit. Mayra thinks it's because Valentine's Day is approaching. The protagonist is surprised to learn this because she had completely forgotten about that date. She doesn't know what to do for Hakuya since he doesn't like sweets, but Mayura tells her that she should definitely give him chocolates and finding out what he might like is her job. The protagonist goes to see Hakuya to ask him, but he was asleep, so she realizes that he really does seem like a dog because he always stays by her side and falls asleep at any moment. She feels like petting him but immediately feels embarrassed when Hakuya wakes up. Meanwhile, Mashiro tries to push Benio away, so she tells her that she has to replace the protagonist because Hakuya stole her, and now she needs a new little sister. After classes, they go to the chocolate store to investigate what kind of chocolate they could use. Mashiro ends up being the one who finds her favorite chocolate because she sees dinosaur eggs that contain a collection of dinosaurs, so she buys the entire stock. Unfortunately, she has such bad luck that she gets the one she likes the least in practically every egg. In the meantime, the protagonist wonders if it's okay that she doesn't have any aspirations. She sees that her mother is an empowered woman who raised them on her own, 
and her sister is so intelligent that she can do whatever she wants. But on her part, it seems like her only option is to get married. Benio doesn't think that's a bad future for her, because when she was a child, it was always her dream. So she shouldn't be ashamed of doing what she wants. However, encouraging her to get married goes against her sisterly fantasies and she's in internal conflict. The next day, the protagonist has Hakuya's chocolates, but she can't find the right moment to give them to him. When they finally have some alone time, she realizes that giving chocolates is seen as a clear sign of love, so she gets embarrassed at the last moment and tells him that she didn't really want anything. To make matters worse, Hakuya overhears that men who don't receive chocolates from the girls they like means those girls don't feel anything for them, and in some cases, they even hate them. This depresses Hakuya because he had been waiting for the protagonist's chocolates all day. As a result, he arrives home angry and Mashiro wonders what happened. But Mayura arrives just in time because she had a lot of leftover dinosaur eggs from her candy store, so she gives them to Mashiro, although her luck remains just as disastrous. Taking advantage of the conversation about chocolates, she asks the protagonist if she gave her chocolates to Hakuya, because she stayed up all night making them and couldn't find the right moment. This brings a sparkle back to Hakuya's eyes because she did make him homemade chocolates. However, while Hakuya is lost in his world, Benyo makes a mess in the house due to the jealousy she feels when she sees this romantic scene. Several days later, the student council secretary named Konoha notices how Benyo frequently goes to Mashiro's classroom. This makes her jealous because she has been a big fan of Benyo since she arrived in the city. Benyo had helped her and earned her admiration. Konoha made an effort to attend the same school as Benyo, but she was surprised to find that Benyo had a little sister she cared for deeply. She can tolerate the protagonist because she's her sister, but she dislikes Mashiro who appear out of nowhere and is monopolizing Benio's attention. Konoha gives Mashiro a disapproving look, which frightens Mashiro so much that she thinks Konoha is a ghost. Konoha's friend Miko offers to investigate Mashiro if she's causing Konoha so much intrigue. Initially, Konoha thinks it's too much, but upon hearing that Mashiro keeps calling her a monster, she decides to gather information to use as leverage. Miko begins her investigation by secretly observing Mashiro and the protagonist. Hakuya asks her to stop and confiscates her camera to delete the photos, Although he has no idea how to do it, Miko is surprised to find that her photos are missing, and when she sees how protective Hakia is of his waifus, Konoha can't help but feel somewhat attracted to him. However, she vehemently denies it. Hours later, the teacher hands out their math exams and announces that anyone who failed will have to take a makeup test. The protagonist doesn't believe that anyone could have failed, but Hakia is embarrassed because his grade in subjects that aren't memorization-based is terrible. Mashiro thinks she can give him private lessons, and Mayura also struggles with math, so they form a study group. During one of the lessons, Mashiro goes to the bathroom and senses that someone is watching her, which is actually Niko trying to remain hidden. Mashiro becomes terrified and runs away, encountering Konoha backlit by the sun and believes she's a monster. This time, she calls her a monster to her face, which greatly upsets Konoha, and she starts shouting in the hallways. To her misfortune, the protagonist appears at that moment and witnesses the entire scene. The next day, the protagonist asks Mashiro how she managed to pass the exam, and Mashiro reveals that she can use hypnosis which allowed her to cheat her way through it. Hakia refuses to use such methods because unlike Mashiro, he is a student of that grade and must pass without cheating. As for Konoha, she worries that Benio will now hate her because she believes that the protagonist told her about the tantrum she threw. However, the protagonist didn't tell her and Benio is preoccupied with sticking close to Mashiro, which makes her jealous. She even voices aloud that she wishes she could be the one Mashiro takes everywhere. The protagonist overhears this but pretends she didn't. Although when Mashiro continues speaking ill of Benio, she confronts her, as she can't stand her lack of manners toward her beloved Benio-sama. Mashiro has no problem talking to her, but realizes she's from the mountains just by smelling her. Konoha becomes alarmed, thinking she smells like a country girl, and tells her to show more respect to Benio. However, Mashiro obviously doesn't accept this advice, as she sees herself as the victim in all of this. Due to this encounter, we discover that Konoha is of the same species as Hakuya and Mashiro, so she also begins to suspect that because otherwise, they couldn't have recognized her so easily. The protagonist believes it's best to keep Konoha's identity a secret because she's closely connected to Benio and the student council. Therefore, she doesn't tell Konoha anything and Konoha realizes she's keeping a secret, but is heartbroken that the protagonist doesn't want to confide in her. The next day, Konoha continues to obsess over how Hakia and Mashiro ended up at Benio's house. It's clear that she's distracted and Nico gives her a bunch of photos of Benio to ease her curiosity. Benio, on the other hand, is in an existential crisis because she doesn't know what secret her beloved little sister is hiding, and she goes to the extreme in her imagination when thinking about what that secret might be. On the weekend, the protagonist and the others go to the mall for a walk. They stop to eat taiyakis, but the protagonist gets scared when she sees how calorie-laden they are because she's worried about her weight. She ends up giving half of hers to Hakia, unintentionally making a cute gesture in the eyes of the others. 
They later go shopping for clothes, and the protagonist realizes that many pants don't fit her because of her wide hips, which frustrates her. Miko feels that she has found valuable information, but Hakiya catches her spying and tells her that there's nothing wrong with the protagonist's hips for her to consider it compromising information. Due to their argument, the protagonist realizes that someone is spying on her. Mayura asks Nico to stop spying on her because she doesn't like appearing in the school newspaper articles, but Nico doesn't plan to give up so easily. The following day, Kanoa goes to the protagonist's classroom to speak with Mashiro alone. They go to the rooftop to avoid interruptions. Binyo notices them and thinks they're going to discuss something about her, but Kashima stops her, suggesting that it's probably not her business. Kanoa and Mashiro dislike each other so much that they don't even want to lose the race to reach the rooftop first. However, they find it too cold to talk there so they decide to move elsewhere. On the other hand, the protagonist gets tired of waiting and coincidentally encounters Binyo, who wants to ask her what's going on between Konoha and Mashiro. However, the protagonist doesn't want to tell her, so she says it's none of her business, leaving Binyo knocked out. Returning to Konoha, she is surprised to learn that they are indeed the same species. She accuses Mashiro of using tricks to win Binyo's favor by infiltrating her house, which greatly offends Mashiro to the point of tears. Hakuya has no choice but to comfort her because they didn't do anything dishonest to enter Binyo's house, and they're not after her. Nevertheless, Kanova had heard from her mother that males of their species are very strange, and that she should seize the opportunity when it arises, so she asks Hakiya to marry her. Just at that moment, the protagonist arrives and overhears this last part. She tries to leave because she believes she shouldn't have heard that, but she is physically clumsy, so she falls and runs away due to nerves. Hakuya goes after her, and Konova doesn't want to let him escape because she wants him as her husband. Mashiro then tells her to leave him alone because he is engaged to the protagonist. On her part, she can't process that someone else wants to marry Hakia, and she doesn't know how to act now that she has competition. To make matters worse, Nico overhears her talking about all of this, so she asks for more details. Hakia tells her that he has no relationship with the protagonist or Kamnoha to dispel any suspicions. However, seeing that she's not satisfied with that information, they send her to ask Kanoha directly if they have any relationship with the protagonist. The protagonist feels a bit relieved when she hears that Hakia only said they are nothing to avoid spreading the rumor of their engagement. Still, she feels a bit selfish for keeping it a secret, even though she didn't expect Mashira to tell Konoha, because if she tells Miko, it will be impossible to keep it a secret. Meanwhile, Niko goes to see Konoha to ask her because, according to Hakia, she has no relationship with the protagonist, which brings a sparkle back to Konoha's eyes because it means they don't agree with the engagement, opening up a possibility for her to be with Hakia. In the evening, Mashiro confronts Binyo, blaming her for the whole problem since her crazy fan keeps insinuating that she's in that house because of Benyo. Benyo asks the protagonist about the fight, but she doesn't want to reveal the true reasons for the argument, let alone Konoha's identity, so she casually says they're fighting because Konoha is jealous of Mashiro getting more attention. Benyo delights in knowing that her fan and her little sister are fighting for her attention and assumes the protagonist is also jealous, to which the protagonist agrees just to avoid further questions. The next day, Konoha makes it clear to the protagonist that she hasn't given up yet, but the protagonist doesn't understand what she means, so she asks Konoha not to say anything about their engagement. To achieve this, Mashiro has the perfect plan, which is to take pictures of Benyo and use them as leverage. However, Benyo immediately realizes it but lets her continue because she doesn't mind. The protagonist decides to take the initiative and asks Konoha directly. She is surprised to hear that Konoha had no intention of revealing their secret. However, Konoha suggests that if she doesn't want to marry Hakia, it might be best to separate from him to avoid causing problems. The protagonist has been pondering if she's been selfish all this time, so she breaks into tears and Benio sees her. The protagonist tells Benio that it was just a little dirt to prevent Benio from taking revenge on someone else. Taking advantage of having Konoha nearby, she asks her to get along with her sisters because she doesn't want any fights because of her. Konoha agrees while putting on a friendly act, but she later regrets agreeing to treat the person she gets along with least at school nicely. Back home, the protagonist prepares a not-too-sweet dessert for Hakia and clarifies that she's not hiding their engagement because she doesn't want to go out with him. However, Hakia doesn't understand what she's saying, so Mashiro translates it as her liking him, which surprises the protagonist as it's the first time her true feelings have come out. Benio takes her frustration out on Hakia, but they let it pass because she now has to focus on returning the chocolates she received from the protagonist as a sign of their feelings. The next day, Benio is quite obvious about her jealousy now that she has realized how much she hates that they are engaged. However, Hakia doesn't react to it, which makes Benio lose her composure and tell him clearly that she will never accept it. Although his face doesn't show it, Hakuyat is actually saddened by Benio's rejection, but Mashiro thinks he shouldn't take it seriously, 
The protagonist doesn't believe they've done anything to raise such suspicions, but Mashira disagrees as they obviously seemed affectionate, no matter how much the protagonist tries to deny it. Mashiro continues to tell Hakia to think of a suitable gift for the protagonist. When they arrive at school, the protagonist talks to Kanoha again to confess that she doesn't like being in the spotlight like her sister, so she doesn't want articles written about her. This offends Kanoha because she has no intention of saying anything. However, after thinking it over, she realizes that being friends with Miko does give the protagonist some reason to be concerned. After classes, Mayura and Mashiro leave the protagonist and Hakuya alone to return home together. This greatly annoys Binyo, as she obviously doesn't want them to get closer. She uses the excuse that they shouldn't let Mashiro go home alone, and Mashiro emerges from the shadows to complain about them, interrupting all her efforts to bring them together. However, this only annoys the protagonist as it's clear they've been watching her from the shadows, which she doesn't like. On another note, Nika wants fresh information to write articles, so Konoha tells her unimportant things to momentarily satisfy her curiosity. However, the protagonist's name appears in the newspaper, which alarms Mashiro, although it's only a small part of the article, with the rest being related to Benio to gain popularity. Returning to Mashiro, she tells the protagonist that she should have something that matches with Hakia, like matching clothes or accessories. Benio appears to boast about all the matches she has with the protagonist from when they were children, but the protagonist doesn't want anything too extravagant. So Hakia turns to the most reliable source in the world, the internet, for help. Due to this, he goes alone after school to look for a gift, but nothing convinces him. He ends up running into the protagonist who found some handkerchiefs in the same color, which he thinks are perfect to represent their engagement. However, he asks her to keep it a secret from the others. Hakuya agrees without any issues because he's very happy to receive something from the protagonist, but it quickly fades when he also gives some to Benio and Mashiro. Mashiro insists that Hakuya shouldn't give up on his gift and needs to give the protagonist something much better to show his feelings. Other day, Mashiro continues to remind Hakuya, which only increases the pressure on him. His stress is evident at school, and the vague advice doesn't help because it's too abstract for him to understand. When they return home, Mashiro once again leaves the protagonist and Hakia alone, but they struggle to find a topic to talk about. The protagonist makes an effort and asks about his bangs covering one eye, although Hakia is used to it by now. On the other hand, Mashiro had gone to buy more dinosaur eggs at the supermarket, but felt lazy to return home, so she used her superhuman agility to get back faster. However, Nico managed to see her disappear in a second. Fortunately, Nico couldn't recognize her, but she still received a scolding from Hakia because they found out they would be forced to return home. Unfortunately, the person who saw her was Miko, and she's very dedicated to what she wants to write about. So she abandons her investigation of the protagonist and focuses on discovering the identity of this unidentified specimen. Kanova suspects that Nico saw Mashiro and tries to stop her, but Nico is determined to investigate it. Hakia and she meet in the hallway, and she informs him that she will set aside the news about the protagonist. Strangely, Hakuya interprets this as the protagonist, not being good news worth investigating further and tells her that she's the best. Kamenoa overhears this and gets the impression that they are very close to say such things at school. She tells Hakuya that she didn't really want him and that she will stop being a bother to them. Hakuya responds rather coldly, thanking her for no longer being a bother, but Mashiro arrives to change the subject because she has the perfect gift for the protagonist. She suggests a date and both agree, but the protagonist invites Mashiro, because she's sure Mashiro would enjoy a city outing with them. They didn't expect Benio to vehemently oppose it, as she cannot tolerate a date. Luckily, Kashima arrives to take Benio away, allowing the protagonist to enjoy the day with Hakuya and Mashiro. However, when they return, the protagonist notices a giant scar on Hakuya's eye and realizes he got it while saving her. Hakuya tells her it's not her fault and that he was at fault for not being skilled enough. Mashiro also tells him that he shouldn't worry too much about it, but the protagonist can't just let it go because she feels guilty just thinking that Hakia has a scar because of her. While the protagonist is having an existential crisis, Hakia receives a letter because they had reported everything in their last report. The response from his mother surprises them greatly, and surprises the protagonist as well because the next day they wake up, and they are gone along with their belongings. No one in the family knows why they left, leaving only a message that they are returning to the mountains. The protagonist feels very alone now that the holidays have begun as they transition to the next year. Meira calls her to see how she's doing, and the protagonist tells her that Hakia has returned to the mountains, seeing how much it affects her. Meira advises her that sometimes you have to be a bit selfish with the things you want. This gives the protagonist the courage to get ready and go in search of her fiancé. While the protagonist climbs the mountain, Hakuya and Mashiro are happily harvesting their plants as they had only gone to help with the harvest. However, Hakuya hears the protagonist's voice, so he runs to find her. She had taken refuge in a small hollow on the mountain as it started to snow and Hakia finds her. She scolds him for not answering her messages, although there is no signal in the mountains. To make matters worse, the protagonist falls ill with a fever, and the snowstorm intensifies, preventing Hakia from carrying her as she would freeze. 
So he decides to go to the village to seek help from the adults, while Mashiro stays to take care of her. Unfortunately, the fire starts to die down, so Mashiro has no choice but to go outside to gather dry firewood. As soon as she leaves, the protagonist begins to have hallucinations, feeling that she was always alone as a child because she is so different from her mother and Binyo, who are both very talented. She starts to think that Hakia and Mashiro left her alone just like always, and this prompts her to try to find them. Mashiro returns a while later because she took longer than expected to gather firewood and is startled to see that the protagonist has escaped. Hakuya arrives with the villagers and they all split up to search for the protagonist in the mountains. After the storm, the protagonist wakes up disoriented in the middle of nowhere, and to make matters worse, a snow cliff breaks off, but Hakuya arrives just in time to save her. After warming her up with some tea, they return to the adults. The protagonist asks Hakuya why he hid his scar from her, and he explains that he didn't want to worry her. She insists that they shouldn't have any secrets between them, given that they are engaged and Hakuya agrees not to keep secrets from now on. After a while, they meet up with the others, but they are not the only ones looking for the protagonist because Benio and the others also came to rescue her when they heard she got lost in the mountains. They all return together, and Benio notices that Hakuya is acting unusually cheerful, which makes her suspicious that something happened despite the protagonist's reassurances that it was nothing. After the holidays, they start a new school year, and thanks to Mashiro's influence, they manage to be together as a family again. The protagonist is happy, although she doesn't know how her story with Hakuya will end, and she can't guarantee that they will always be together. However, she has decided to enjoy these moments with her entire family. A few days later, Hakuya wins five tickets to choose a hot spring resort, and Mashiro is interested in one that is famous for sightings of unknown creatures. They all go together and take pictures in a place designed to attract fans of these creatures. Benyo's obvious interest is bathing with her little sisters, so Mashiro tells her they will go to the outdoor bath and asks her to go ahead while they get ready. However, Benyo ends up going to the indoor bath because she couldn't bear the thought of bathing with Benyo, even though it's quite normal in hot springs. While Benyo eagerly waits to see her sister's bodies, Meira mentions that there have been quite a few testimonies about sightings of unknown species in the area, which excites Mashiro, as it means they can explore the forest in search of one. But the first one to be caught is Mashiro, because Benyo is such a good swimmer that she ends up in the channel connecting the two baths. After an afternoon of fun at the hotel, they go to the hunting forest, and even though Meshiro has every intention of finding something, she gets scared at the first sound and runs away. Benyo goes after her, but when she sees someone chasing her with a creepy expression, she runs even faster, taking them far away from the protagonist and Hakuya. Hakuya promises to protect the protagonist no matter what they encounter, and Benyo promises to take responsibility for straying so far and looking after Mashiro, even if they end up lost in the forest forever. But that's the last thing Mashiro wants, so they start walking back and see some shadows that terrify Mashiro. However, it turns out to be the protagonist and Hakuya. When they reach the lake, they find Mayura and see something resembling Nessie in the lake, just as the news had reported. Although they don't get a clear view of it at night, Mashiro is convinced that it's real. However, the real scoop is not Nessie but Mashiro and Binyo, who were seen jumping in the trees. Back at school, Mashiro wonders how Binyo can be friends with Kashima when one is a total pervert and the other is a decent person. The protagonist tries to explain that they have things in common, like intelligence, but Mashiro's first thought when she thinks of Benyo is her obsession with little sisters, which scares her about Kashima. The protagonist clarifies that Kashima is like an older sister, but not to the extreme like Benyo, and when they were kids, she always helped Benyo control herself. Still, she also enjoyed teasing her and even convinced her that Benyo was a pervert. The protagonist wanted to be like Benyo, so she tried to be a pervert when she grew up, even though she didn't know what it meant. To change the subject, the protagonist asks what Mashiro used to play with Hakuya when they were in the mountains. Mashiro recalls that it wasn't very fun because everyone in the village was elderly, as the young people migrated to the city. So she spent her time following Hakuya, while he went fishing or sneaking sweets from her mother, which earned her scoldings and punishments. However, Hakuya always comforted her so that she wouldn't feel too bad. The protagonist is glad that they've always had a good sibling relationship. However, Benio realizes that they are talking about older siblings and she decides to show Mashiro how much she cares about her. The protagonist explains that they were just reminiscing about the past, but all Kashima can think about is when the protagonist wanted to be a pervert, which was her most humble moment. 